In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So I did make the commitment to keep my sermon short with all that we have going on, but this is quite a full gospel. Uh, also, you should know that in Haiti, I think the worship services, at least I've been told, often go on for many hours, uh, and not necessarily in our native tongue. So, uh, so you are getting off a little light. Uh, have you ever had that moment, and I've had it more often than I care to admit, uh, where the perfect thing to say always comes to you, about 15 seconds or more after the moment to share it. Sometimes you're in a debate and you've got the, uh, the perfect retort, but it comes afterwards, and so you gently try to bend the conversation back around so you can drop that perfect nugget of wisdom uh, right there and close the conversation for good. Or you're uh, leaving the uh, event wherever you are, and you're in the car driving home, and all of a sudden you're like, man, that's what I should have said. Uh, and the moment's lost. So if you're like me, that's generally when the smartest and wisest and cleverest things come to mind uh, when nobody is, is around to hear it, uh, which is probably why it sounds so wise and clever, because it only lives inside my head. Uh, but have you ever noticed that the heroes that you have on television uh, usually have that silver tongue? They always have the perfect response, always seem, uh, and it's like a great athlete where everything seems in slow motion. For them, you know, a conversation is that way, where they always have time to pull that one-liner, that zinger, that perfect response. Uh, it's why the TV politicians that have screenwriters are always so much uh, more eloquent and seem to always know exactly what to say, where real-life politicians stumble a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's so wonderful to have screenwriters, and I've never been gifted with screenwriters. So, um, But this is true for every single one of us, except for the word incarnate. Except for the person for whom all things came into being, the Word, Jesus Christ. And this gospel shows that perfect uh, wisdom uh, that only the Word incarnate could have. So it's a pretty uh, electric moment. Uh, Jesus has been teaching in the temple, uh, and uh, on, on several occasions in the, uh, the times leading up to it, um, uh, he has provoked uh, the leaders of the Jewish community. Uh, he turned over the tables outside of the temple, uh, uh, and he turned them over, and this is important because it comes back into the story. He turns over the tables not because they're breaking the law, uh, the Jewish law. Uh, they're actually following the law faithfully, uh, but because they are benefiting from it. They are profiting uh, at someone else's expense. People have traveled a long way to come uh, and to be present with God in the temple, uh, and they have to exchange all their coinage at a, at a tax. Uh, they've got to buy uh, a, a fitting sacrifice to make when they're in the temple. Uh, and Jesus sees these as, uh, instead of a gate uh, uh, um, uh, opening up, uh, God's house as a gate closing and keeping people away uh, and taking very vulnerable people and charging them more uh, so that they can come in and be present with a God who wants nothing more uh, than them to come into, uh, into God's presence. And so remember that as we get farther into the story. Uh, then he's in the temple and he's told a couple stories, a couple parables uh, that don't necessarily make uh, the Pharisees or Sadducees uh, or, or Herodians look all that good. And so they're trying to entrap him. Uh, and so they come up with a plan. You can just picture uh, this covert operation where they say, we'll send a couple of, uh, of our fellow people in uh, and we'll ask Jesus this question right in front of the big crowd. Uh, and no matter which way they answer the que he answers the question, uh, he'll be trapped. So this is the question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, to the emperor? Uh, and these are uh, particular taxes that are above and beyond all of the taxes uh, that are required uh, of, of, the, of the Jewish people, the, the taxes that pay for the widow, the taxes, the temple tax, the taxes that pay for their civic responsibility. Uh, these are taxers, uh, taxes to the oppressor uh, 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 in their land so that they can pay all of those difficult fees that come with being uh, uh, and costs associated with uh, being an occupier of someone else's land. So these are taxes so that the occupier can pay the expenses of being the occupier. Uh, uh, so you can imagine how popular those are uh, amongst the people that are most captivated by Jesus' message. Uh, remember the, the disenfranchised, uh, those that feel heavenly burdened, uh, the poor. Uh, imagine how they feel about paying this tax on top of all the other taxes. Uh, the, and then you have the Herodians. 
Uh, their allegiance is to Rome, uh, uh, to Herod. Uh, they're uh, uh, either family or connected to Herod, and their allegiance is to Rome. So imagine how they would hear it if Jesus says, don't worry about Caesar. You don't have to pay taxes to Caesar. Just give God everything. So he's kind of stuck. So if he goes one way, uh, he loses his following. Uh, if he goes the other way, he loses his head. It's sort of a Sophie's choice. Uh, and they've got him right there in the temple, trapped. There's nothing Jesus can do. He's going to be stuck. Either he's going to lose his following or he's going to lose his life. Uh, perfect. And so Jesus takes a deep breath. And he says, does anybody have a denarius? Does anybody have a coin? Now remember, the reason uh, that he turned over the tables is because you can't go into the temple with a coin uh, with a graven image on it, with a coin uh, with Caesar's uh, face on it. So he says, does anybody have a coin? And the leaders, quickly, without any, any issue, manifest a coin. There's a coin right there. And imagine, the <gasps> as everybody realizes, they're not practicing what they're preaching. The, 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 the things that they had to do before they could come in and prepare to go into the temple, the leaders seem to disregard. Uh, so there's a, a gasp for air in the room as they pull out the coin. And he says, whose image or whose likeness? And the word's important. Whose image or whose likeness is on that coin? And they say, Caesar's. And he says this. He says, render unto, unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And unto God, that which is God. So the Herodians go back and they say, yeah, all's fine. Um, you know, uh, he didn't say anything about not paying taxes. Uh, and you can only imagine as they go back to their uh, den uh, and, and, and they ask, well, how did it go? Did you catch him? Uh, not quite. Because everybody who knew Jewish scripture, everybody who knew the teachings of Jesus, knew that all things are God's. That God gave us all things. And they also knew uh, that in that first chapter of Genesis, that we are made in the image or likeness of God. Whose image is on that coin? Whose likeness is on that coin? Caesar's. We'll give that to Caesar. But whose likeness, whose image is on every single one of us? God's. So even well beyond what we do with our money, what we do with every breath that we take has to have that question. Whose likeness is on you? Whose image are you made in? Whose beloved are you? And that supersedes all of the other questions. And one that should pervade all of us. Every Sunday at 8 o'clock, uh, when people bring up the gifts of bread and wine and our, and, and our, our, our money, uh, and I say our uh, loosely, uh, we say as we bring that up, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee question that should gnaw on us, that should permeate each breath, is whose are we? What image is marked on our very being? If we truly believe what the Bible says, that we are made in the image of God, in the likeness of God, then render unto God those things that belong to God. And let that be your stewardship. How do we use the life God's given us? How do we use every breath that God has given us? Because we are God's. We have God's image, God's likeness in us. So render unto God that which is God's. Amen.